This is how you can create awesome particle effects and explosions on Scratch. These are incredibly common and you should see why. They really make games look so much better. In this video, I'll go over how to create two of these types of explosions and you can decide which one to use depending on your game itself. In this project, I have two sprites, the player itself and a circular sprite called explosion, which is roughly the size of my player. Let's say that you want the player to explode when the space key is pressed. We'll coordinate this with three different message blocks. The first can be called death. The second message can be called death tick and this will be the one responsible for the animation. So put this within a repeat 10. The last message can be called death end and this will basically make the whole animation conclude. Great. Now move on to the explosion sprite. At the start, when the green flag is clicked, we will set the ghost effect to 40%, then resize it, and then hide. Now is the main code. On receiving the death message, we just move to the player's position and then show. Great. When we receive the death tick message, we will make the sprite expand and fade at the same time. So change size by 20 and change the ghost effect by about 7. At this point, the effect will have ended, so on receiving the death end message, just hide. And well, that's all there is for this effect. You can see that it gives a pretty clean look that's way better than nothing. You can even add sound effects to make this cooler. Let me show you. Yeah, that sounded really good. Alright, now I'll go over the second way of creating an explosion. This is more suitable when the player controls themselves through something like a shape. As you can see here, I have some code that is fairly similar but with some differences. For the player itself, I have a death animation as well as the death fade. The second animation will be involved in creating a smooth fade out effect. Given that I just explained the previous way of exploding a sprite, this should make sense. Now I'll go through the explosion sprite. You can see in the costumes that I have four different colors from the same player sprite. If you wish, you can add more but this will suffice for my example. Also notice that I've named the costumes as numbers, this will make switching between them very easy. Okay, let's now get back to the code tab. As of this moment, the sprite will just hide when the green flag is clicked, so we'll have to actually create the clones. For this effect, you'll need to randomize three different attributes of each clone. The first is the costume, which we will switch randomly. The second is the direction, this can be from negative 180 to positive 180, which basically means that these particles will fly around in all directions around the player. Lastly, the size can be a random value from 25 to 75. Each of these parameters need to be applied for a clone, so enclose this within a repeat 10 and at the end of each iteration, create a clone. Awesome, this will set everything up and now we can code the animation. On receiving the death message, we just move the clones to the player's position and then show. On the other hand, during each tick of the death animation, the clones can just move in their previously assigned direction. Adding an if on edge bounce will make the aesthetics a lot better. Lastly, for the death fade message, we will apply the same logic as the death animation, except that we will also slowly fade the particles out. We can be sure that the particles will all be invisible, so you can leave it at that with no height necessary. And well, if you test out the program, you should get this marvelous effect. I mean, just take a look at this, it's so cool.